How's it going guys and welcome to today's video. Today on the ranch I'm dealing with a problem that I wish I could tell you came as a little bit more of a surprise to me, but it's something that I kind of seen coming for a while. And that is our Hereford bull has started to develop a limp and it's time to remove him from service. That's what we're doing today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Back in the beginning of June when we brought the bulls here, a few of you guys noticed that the Hereford bull was already walking sort of tender on that foot. I think it was most noticeable when he jumped out of the trailer. When you watch the Black Angus bull jump out, he was raring to go. The Hereford bull uh, reminded me more of like somebody kind of easing down into a, like a bathtub or something. He was very careful about how he stepped out of that trailer. Now at the time, I knew that the bull had sustained an injury a few months prior and that he might be a little bit sore. But I figured that, you know, maybe another part of that was that he's an older bull now and they just don't have the same level of enthusiasm as younger bulls have. There's a joke that revolves on this premise and I'm sure someone's going to leave it in the comments. But anyway, yes, he did sustain an injury a few months before he came here. But after being uh, separated from that herd and having some time to rest and recover, he was able to get back to what we were hoping was about 100%. Um, he was in with cows, he was in with other bulls and able to hold his own just fine. And usually that's a good indication that they're gonna make it. However, since coming back here a month later, he has managed to sort of herd it again. Now, it's not really bad yet. In fact, I would even venture to say that some people that aren't real familiar with livestock might not even be able to spot the fact that he is limping. But I can see that he's definitely starting to favor his left front foot. And I wanna get him out of the cows and off by himself though, so that he has a chance to recover before that injury gets any worse. Probably he will not be put back in service in my herd or the owner's herd. Uh, most likely he's gonna get cold now because this is kind of seeming like it may become a chronic issue. And you know, the other thing is that if a bull can't make it on flat irrigated pasture, then he probably can't make it anywhere. As I've been sitting here talking to this camera, the cows have slowly started to sort of migrate up towards the corral. This is actually a really good thing because I don't want to actually push that bull any more than I have to um, because as you're sort of putting pressure on them, trying to get them to move, they're going to have a tendency to move a little bit quicker and a little bit more uh, urgently than maybe they otherwise would. So as far as he can get just on his own free will, the better. In fact, I might just sit down here for a little while and see if he gets closer. I might even get really lucky and they might run into the corral and get a drink, but I, that probably won't happen. Um, but we'll let him get up as close as he can on his own. And then when he gets close enough where I think uh, we're, we're in good shape, then I'll run up there with the side-by-side -side and I may not even push him in with the side-by-side. -side. I think I'll probably just walk behind him because he is moving kind of slow as, as could be expected. And I think the presence of the side-by-side, -side, again, is gonna have that same effect, like I mentioned before. It's gonna make him try to move faster than he should. Um, I think with something like this, slow and steady, nice and gentle, that's the way we're gonna do it. And now that I bring that up, I kinda wanna touch on another point that I've probably mentioned before. But a lot of people have a tendency to wanna work cows as fast as they can. I mean, this is the whole premise of competitive rodeo, right? You wanna get the job done as quickly as you can and as efficiently as you can, and that's all great. But in a lot of cases, the slower you work cattle, actually the better it ends up being. When you push cows fast or hard, then they have a tendency to get riled up and they might be more likely to try to jump a fence, try to turn around, get back to where they were, um, all of these instincts that they have to get away from us are heightened. 
Now, if you work them slower and you just kind of let them go at their own pace, I have found that, I mean, a lot of times it ends up being faster, but it's definitely better and less stressful for the animals. Um, we're not on a time limit out here, so I mean, I got all, I got all evening to do what we're about to do, and I'm not gonna try to push this bull any faster than I have to. Well, the look on his face pretty much says it all. He is definitely not too happy about being in here. He'd rather be out on the grass. He'd rather be out with the cows. But unfortunately, this is what it's going to have to be for a little while. The purpose of keeping him in here is just because we can manage his environment and we can keep everything that he needs very close. I can keep food and water very close by and thereby keeping him off of that leg as much as possible. When he's out on pasture, kind of by design, he has to always be up moving around, grazing, going back to water, chasing cows. When he's in here, he's got nothing else to do but eat, drink, and rest. Before I shoot the closing here, I do want to point out that I'm breaking one of the main rules, probably the main rule when you're around a bull, and that is never turn your back on him. The reason that I feel comfortable doing it, for one, is because I know that this guy's pretty gentle, but for two, he's lame right now, and odds are he's probably not going to come after me, and if, if he does, he'll make a lot of noise, and hopefully I'll be able to get out of the way fast enough. I don't know. When I say it out loud, it doesn't sound like the best plan. Hopefully after a few days, this guy starts walking a little bit better, and then the owner can either decide to let me turn him back out with my cows, or he'll take him back to his place and give him further treatment. Thanks for hanging out at the ranch with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.
I don't know if I want to turn my back on him. <laughs>